Well, here's an interesting story. The ACLU revealed under testimony that it wrote Amber Heard's domestic violence op-ed and timed its release with the debut of her film Aquaman. The group also testified that Heard has only paid them half of the money she promised from her divorce settlement with Johnny Depp. Yeah, Ooh. so this is a this is a really uh, weird kind of th uh, thing that came out, obviously, of the the trial right now. This this dispute, legal dispute between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, who were married and are married no longer. And she had, uh, so she, he's suing her for defamation or libel, in part stemming from this Washington Post op-ed. Uh, that that alludes to domestic violence, and he's saying that was an accusation of domestic violence against her. And their you know their marriage, their relationship was very messy. There's some he said he said she said elements to it. I don't quite know what to make of it. Uh, they seem like very troubled people. But this was a weird revelation to me that this op-ed was part of an it was the ACLU was very involved in crafting it, and then she had promised them money in exchange, like that she was going to donate to, so it's not in an illegal sense, but in a ethically gray sense, right? It's, it's Yeah, so I think the understanding was that she, you know, to deflect some of the whatever, whatever criticism she might get for trying to exploit Johnny Depp for money and getting the settlement, she was going to give it to a worthy cause, you know? So that's, that's why it's particularly untoward that she didn't actually even pay up. And the ACLU was, was like, yeah, sounds great. Right, well, <laughs> like, but like, kinda... in, in a world, I think fundamentally in a world yeah. where she was in fact abused by Johnny Depp, and obviously I don't know what happened, but the the color of the stuff that's coming out of the testimony is really, you know, uh, throwing throwing her her testimony, her credibility is, is kind of under the radar right now. Um, yes, very it, much it, so. But in a world where she was being truthful and was being abused by Johnny Depp, an organization that is invested in protecting women and fighting for laws that help women in domestic disputes, helping her to craft an op-ed about her experiences wouldn't necessarily seem untoward. The problem is the ACLU is basically going on her word and not waiting for mm -hmm. any kind of legal mm -hmm. process to adjudicate who was actually telling the truth. And this kind of speaks to some of the bigger problems with Me Too, cases that don't rise to criminality that are kind of adjudicated in the court of public opinion can lead to exactly these kind of perverse incentives and folks ending up thinking they're doing something good because they want to stand with victims, but the person who is claiming to be victimized isn't always, isn't always in fact, what they have represented themselves. And, it, and even if they are, the ACLU is supposed to stand for due process as well. So it's, it, I mean, it's just as you said. What do you think, Kim? Well, I'm curious if the ACLU could be potentially, uh, you know, if they could go after them for the defamation. I mean, mm -hmm. if they're the ones who actually wrote the article, uh, could they potentially be, you know, are they, I guess, guilty of libel potentially? You know, does or is it that, well, the burden of whether or not it was true you know, they were basically maybe writing it based on what Amber Heard said to them. Now, right. I get it. I'm not necessarily upset by them writing it. I don't think everybody's a writer. I think a lot of victims just have a story and they don't really know the most eloquent way to say it. So I'm not opposed to an organization coming in and saying we can help you and we can help get your story out there. Um, I think where it becomes obviously kind of suspect is the money aspect. Like were they paid in a way to, you know, this kind of pre -qu uh, quid pro quo type situation with Amber, you know, was it like she came to them and said, okay, I'll give you all this money if you guys help me out because then it legitimizes her claims mm -hmm. and then, you know, maybe makes her look better in the situation against Johnny Depp. I don't know. That's a big question. I do know, though, um, in regards to her not paying the money to the ACLU, it wasn't because she was greedy. Apparently she did fall on really difficult financial time. She didn't have the money anymore to give them. And that might have to do with the fact she was being sued by mm. Johnny Depp, potentially. So, mm. um, you know, that and also the money that she did give, she did give half of the money that she promised. Half of that money, almost half of that money was actually given to the ACLU by Elon Musk. Yes. Who actually they were, gave her the money. And they that were in a relationship. Boyfriend. Yeah, he was in love with her. He talked about after the breakup that it was really tough on him. But um, he kind of swooped in and tried to be the hero a little bit. And he also tried to make an arrangement saying Clearly, that yeah. she would make these payments to the ACLU over a 10 year time period. You know, that that's when she would get that money to them. But she fell on hard time. She's being sued. Um, but, I, you know, I'm curious if you think that the ACLU, you know, did they do. Is this more of a problem for them that they would accept this sort of like 
okay, you're going to give us some money. We're going to put this out there. We're going to use our influence to get this published in a big publication to get, we're going to get it pressed by making sure we time it with your movie release. I mean, is this a bad look for the ACLU or do you think this wor looks worse for Amber? I think it's, no, I think it is kind of a bad look for the ACLU. I guess the timing it with the movie release isn't, uh, I don't, that's not I mean, really that's a problem. Right, that, right. That's just good comp. They're, they want to get as, mo the, the, as, as much attention for it as they can. But it, it is reflective. It's reflective of exactly what Brianna was saying. The, the, they're kind of, uh, you know, the ACLU on Me Too stuff has kind of been in a place that I'm not comfortable with as, as someone who thinks we have to be very cognizant of due process, you know, when just accusations are being leveled. Some accusations not rising to the level of criminal conduct anyway. Yeah, so, and then there you know, is no due you, process. Right, it's like there isn't. cultural due yeah. process, but there's but no... But that's something the ACLU kind of purports to stand for, well, the, or has. The, I mean, this, this is the fundamental issue. We're all, everyone is being asked to declare definitively what they know about something, and then your morality is being judged on yeah. what side of the line you're on. And individuals are being asked to be prosecutors, detectives, private investigators, police officers, getting to the bottom of what happened between people, perhaps years before. And there is all of this public pressure to make a statement and to take a position. And so mm -hmm. I think some of the worst kind of Me Too offenses, it hasn't been the the Harvey Weinsteins and all of that that get lit, you know borne out in a court of law and we feel kind of confident that justice is meted out in those contexts. It's the weird Aziz Ansari, mm -hmm. uh, Al Franken instances where there's no good way to understand, okay, even if you agree that somebody did something bad, how bad is it? What is the metric? What does accountability look like? What does penance look like? What does rehabilitation look like outside of the context of the carceral system? And because we can't have, we don't have conversations about that because there's so much like moral stickiness around it, you end up having either cast somebody out entirely who's done something like negligible, like Aziz Ansari, or you are accused of, you know, siding with someone who is kind of maximally wrong. Everyone gets conflated into being Harvey Weinstein. Or all the or all the campus cases. I mean, there were very real changes made to Title IX adjudication to sexual misconduct disputes between students in educational settings on college campuses. There were there was a lot of new guidance, and I, I've talked about this a lot in previous uh, radars. Uh, Emily Jashinsky has as well. We followed these subjects closely under the Obama administration. There were a lot of changes that 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 were in the in the legal system or the way these were being handled that I, I thought, and Emily Jasinski thinks as well, really undermined uh, due process protections that, that should exist for people accused in those situations, which are sometimes very ambiguous situations. And the Trump administration uh, reversed some of those changes. It was one of, one of the policies of the Trump Education Department that I, I most vigorously supported was them undoing those changes. And the ACLU, which I would have expected under, in a, under different circumstances to be all for defending you know, the rights of even the accused in those circumstances were not only insufficiently committed, but actually spoke out against uh, some of the changes. So it's that kind mm -hmm. of, uh, it's that kind of uh, refocusing on, on what the priorities are uh, in order to appease, I, I assume, you know, the new kind of woke employees, or maybe, I, I think it's more their employees than anyone else. Uh, is a is a is a, a concern that again I've raised and wow. Emily as well. And check out those past radars if you curious. Donors, about I would say they're donors. They definitely. I think it's more yeah. Well, it's I'm sure it's donors to some degree, but I think it's I think it's literally employees. It's the young staffers they bring on who say, "Wait a minute, I thought I I signed on to fight the Trump administration. You said there's something the Trump administration does that's actually good. That does not compute. No, we have to be against that." Well, and I think that what they, what happened was they actually saw their donations increase quite a bit under that, the that Trump administration. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, anyway, it's an it's an interesting case and the whole Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing is uh, is 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 very interesting. We should probably uh, look at it more closely maybe next week. Uh, anyway, we'll have more rising right after this. <laughs> 